So I don't even think we need to do a reintroduction, but for those of you that didn't see the first half of this, this is uh, like half of the cast and crew of Bootyology. I'm so excited to have everybody back for a second time. It's very rare that I get to have people back a second time, especially to talk about the, the same film. So we really get to talk more in depth about it. Um, again, I really, really, really enjoyed Bootyology. I downloaded the album. I've been listening to it. My wife, I think, is now sick of it. So she may not be your biggest fan. Um, <laughs> but i You're thoroughly enjoyed... you overdid it you went too far <laughs> i i'm thoroughly enjoying it uh we traveled last month and i downloaded it right before we got on the plane so i listened to it all my way down to florida and it was just a very enjoyable plane ride <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, um, do you have a favorite song on the on the record um i go back and forth between booty duty and we are all but men oh, all right good choices yeah, those are my two favorites. Um, I feel like those would probably be the, the obvious favorites, but uh, I don't know. I'm not well versed in music like I am with movies. So I just, I don't know. I know what I like and that's about it. I can't explain much else about it. <laughs> um, but so getting back into the film, guys, um, I'm just curious before we get into that, this film, I mean, how did you guys get into filmmaking in the first place and what was your journey like into you know, the filmmaking process? Uh, well, let's like, let's like go answer first. Uh, you know, I'm one of the, yeah. one of the, uh, yep. the cliched like Star Wars kids, you know, okay. like I saw Star Wars um, uh, on DVD. No, I saw Star Wars, <laughs> I saw Star Wars in the theater and uh, that it blew my mind. And then it, it sort of, was the gateway drug into other films it's strange because i i i had a like this weird child of, not weird i guess if you're a fan i had this child obsession with harrison ford and i sort of followed harrison ford's movies so at a young age i'm watching movies by like france ford coppola and alan j packet mm -hmm. and stuff like that and then it, it just sort of naturally progressed into okay how do they how do they do this and um and then i i it was like learning a language and then all of a sudden you know you're sort of semi-fluent in the language and you just want to keep pursuing that um and keep trying and trying and trying so you get something done yeah yeah well you said it's a cliche answer but i think it's it's a good answer i mean if you watch those movies and you don't like them um I would say there's something wrong with you, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but what about what about the rest of you guys? How'd you guys feel about getting into uh, the filmmaking business, and how'd you get yeah. started, and all that? Um, I mean, all, all of us to some degree have a performing or you know some sort of entertainment industry background. Mine, um, I was uh, as a little kid wanted to be an actor because I liked sort of telling stories. And I just as a kid, I naively was like, well, they're the ones talking, so they're telling the story. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, that's really the director. And then I sort of learned that that also was not true, really. And it was more that I wanted to be a writer. Um, so I pursued that uh, a bit. I went to USC film school for screenwriting. There he goes again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I got... Uh, out of there you know you can't it's not like going to like law school or medical school it's not like you go like okay i got my degree in screenwriting time to be a screenwriter Here's yeah. my resume. and then they're like yes right this way sir so uh i you know followed followed the jobs that i got which led me into music which led me into meeting bob spencer and i you know we, we met in uh in college where we did we did sketch comedy shows tv stuff for the school uh school tv channel there so you know we have we have a little bit of a history sort of building up before we got involved in this um but i'll let bob tell his story too because he's got a he's got a richer history than I, either either of us yeah i mean for me it definitely was it started in performing uh i performed as a, a kid and um was in les mis at the age of 10 um wow. so so from there there was and and when you're in theater, it's very like, 
you know, the the performer, like you're you're always feeling like you're on and you're doing these kind of things. And then filmmaking, uh, when I landed my first film, um, I was like, oh, this is this is is very different. Um, and and I and and, you know, as much as you rehearse and do things in theater, you you have those eight shows a week and you just you bang it out. But then and 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 movie, you really get to like you get to perfect that scene. You mm. get to, you know, they're they're coming at you with all the angles and, and you you learn a whole different just a whole like I, I think Joe put it well, like you you learn a whole different language. Um, yeah. So uh, I I was I was obsessed with that and I was, uh, you know, moved out here and blah 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 music all the things happen and uh joe and i met and um yeah and and ever since i've uh i've not only been able to be in the movies but then but help produce and and do all those kind of things and so for me um yeah the love goes goes way back and meeting just such talented people whether it be directors or or actors or writers or dps or whoever it was the whole art of filmmaking it's it's just a it's a it's a it's a crazy thing and like when a movie gets done and it's released like bootyology it really is kind of the ultimate i was talking to someone the other day it's the ultimate magic trick okay. because because when you're making a film you're like okay there's like there are days where you're like Oh, this is awesome. We're we're gonna be millionaires. This is the best thing ever, right? Like, and then there are other days where you're like, wait a second, are we gonna finish this? Is this gonna actually be a thing? Like, you know, and and especially when you're independently making stuff, it's just you, you know, day to day, you really have to grind it out. And I'll give it to to everyone on the Zoom call, Joe and and the guys here, like, like everyone really grinded to get this thing to what you see today mm -hmm. uh and uh and our other partner ryan as well um who wore you know we all wore just many many hats when it came to this film um so so yeah i mean i, I think i think especially in in these kind of cases to have that deep love and to have that like that history with it i think that we all kind of do um it it helps you it helps you finish it <laughs> yeah <laughs> which i think is one of the harder things to do, do you, can for we sure highlights or no yeah 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 same my highlights. Bob, yeah bob is is being coy but like he's yeah. he's in uh he stars in a movie called jack the bear he stars in a movie called bingo which is about a dog which is a great it's a classic uh he's also in rudy the the uh fo football movie what sport okay. is it? and the ref and the ref so with uh <clears throat> with dennis leary and he who shall not be named <laughs> oh that's who i said it <laughs> well, well, Rudy, believe it or not, was I think was the second DVD I ever bought. So, oh, boy. oh yeah, you watch, yeah, you got Bob on your shelf, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, so Bob, you actually touched on a lot of things that I wanted to cover. So, thank you. You made the, you made the transition a little bit easier. So, you, you talked about questioning whether or not you're going to finish this movie, and sometimes you maybe even jokingly think you're going to be a millionaire, even though I think you should make a million dollars for making bootyology. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, when you question the validity of your movie, or I don't know, if, I don't know if you ever get to that point, if you ever question the validity of the uh, validity of the story or the songs or any part of it, how do you go about, you know, rectifying that doubt? it's the validity that you question we have it it's still there the uh <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh there's you know it's i think i mean i'll rewind to when i was a kid and i i would like make movies with my dad's video camera and you're like i don't understand why the credits are 25 minutes long and all these stuff like i know what you need you need a guy with a camera and a person in front of there and being, you know, what do you need? Like, you need like four people to make a movie. I don't understand this list. And then when you make it, you're like, oh yeah, I understand all. Oh, like, this I know this I list should have been longer. Yeah, we needed more people on this list. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, you know, there's always, there's always those like things where you're just like, tech, like technologically, like, did we, like, where's this footage? You know, did it get erased? And, you know, there's just all of these little pumps that, you know, I'm sure the biggest of Hollywood movies also have to deal with it, but they probably have the budget to have a little bit more uh, 
uh, I don't know, support, I guess, for yeah. it. Yeah. There are, I like to say to, the, to, the, to the, to anybody like starting out is that it's, it's a, a series of minor miracles, right? It's uh, finishing a screenplay is a minor miracle. And then finding the money to make it is a minor miracle. Getting everyone together for that amount of money to do it is a minor miracle. Actually finishing it, like getting it in the can is a minor miracle. Uh, having it cut together and actually make sense is a minor miracle. And then the last miracle being whether it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. And that's a hell of a lot of miracles to get to just let alone get, get a complete film, film, let alone whether or not people think it's good or not. That's one of the reasons why if, if, I, if I watch a movie that makes sense and even if I don't like it, I try to think about the good stuff in it because just the fact that it got to the point where you could say that it's good or bad mm -hmm. shouldn't even happen because there's so many things that have to be done just to get there. Yeah. So, well, I, I, a friend of mine, he said, because I mean, I obviously give some films bad ratings. Uh, he he says that there are no bad movies. He kind of had a, has a similar, you know, idea as you, where just the fact that it was made, there's something good about it. I mean, the fact that they put all this time and effort into it. Um, so, I mean, to a degree, I I agree with that, but I still have to be a dickhead sometimes and tell <laughs> people their, their movies suck. <laughs> Um, I, mean, I, th I think you. you know i what from from my perspective like i probably had the most doubt through the process uh just because like like you know when we started making booty boy songs again i was like i don't know who this is for and and like i was like i don't know if anyone is gonna care about this and it really you know it really didn't matter at that point whether or not anyone cared it was more just to uh to sort of do something that we, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of bring it back. Um, and, you know, there's like no, there's no, uh, like to put it on Spotify, it's like there's, there's, there's very low, low barrier of entry. So we were like, well, we'll just do it. But then, you know, Joe was like, I care. And then, you know, I, you know, I think we found some people that cared. And then in making the movie, um, I think, I think, I, I had a lot of doubts about the same kind of thing. Like, how is this going to play? You know, how are the jokes going to land? Are the jokes going to land? Are people going to think it's funny? Um, you know, I, like for me, it was, it was of epic importance that it be funny, like as funny as it could be. We tried. And, Spencer. Yeah. And, and I think we got close, <laughs> um, but, but we just need to take one more pass. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but, but, but you know you you just don't know until like you can think something's funny and like and then you show it to an audience and they just don't laugh and and we had four we were fortunate that there were like five of us but there were really only five people that were really making all the decisions about like whether or not something stays or goes and um and you have to be you have to be really critical of of stuff and and um but but like it was really like when we did the first screening, it was really I was really happy that people were laughing at things and they laughed at things that I didn't even think were funny because like to me, it's like it's like my life. But to them, they've never heard of B Bootytron 9000. But like <laughs> I've, I've known that guy for 25 years, you know, whatever. <laughs> You forget that Bootytron 9000 is, is a pretty funny thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say the name of the movie or the title of one of the songs, I think, I, how the hell did you guys, you know, do any of this? How did you manage to, to do any of it without, you know, I, don't, I don't even know how you did it. But um, <laughs> Spencer, you said, like, you, you all kind of said that, um, that doubt doesn't ever really go away. You still, that kind of lingers forever. But so when I get up in front of a classroom to teach, I don't really have to press play. I don't really have a choice. I, I just get up there and I have to teach and it doesn't really matter what they think about my lesson, the kids. Um, you, for lack of a better term, have to hit send. You have to decide that this is worth sending to someone. How do you get over that fear even temporarily and just be like, even if I don't, even if people don't think it's funny, even if I don't think it's funny, it's it's okay to submit to the world. 
that's that's something that goes throughout any form of art you know the mona lisa was painted like 18 times or something you know uh in all honesty i don't think you're ever going to find an artist who's like i did it i mm. did the perfect thing it's perfect i i did it like they always are going to be like yeah i should have cut that shorter i should have you know cut out that scene i should have you know turned up the hi-hats or you know whatever it is mm. you know i should have repainted that section what, whatever form of art it is any i think artist worth anything is is gonna always have a way that they could eventually you know improve it but it'll never be perfect and so yeah. the best the best thing an artist could ever have is a deadline okay <laughs> so, yeah you know, no 100 percent. if, 100%. That's if one you thing had learned. if you had 25 years to write a song like most good songwriters would take all 25 and then if you gave them an extra year they'd take that too so you know it is it is just part of the honing and it's part of the process and deadlines are i think our best friend <laughs> Yeah, I think, What's the think, edge? I think it was originally applied to painting, which is that it's not finished, it's abandoned, right? Yeah, interesting. That's what I go by. It's never going to be finished. It's just there's a yeah. power to abandon it and push Yeah, it I, I mean, I think with 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 our music as well, like you know, anything that even if like if if, if it was like if you're talking advice for people who want to do it, I I say set some kind of set some kind of schedule set some kind of deadlines because even if they're artificial you you'll work like you have something to deliver and you'll and and if you push it you can put you know you people change deadlines all the time but but like i just know how how we operate i know how a lot of other artists operate until they feel like they have to do it it's like you kind of get you just kind of get there and you or you keep tweaking and but if you have if you know you're like i got to get it done by this point you're going to get it done by that point. And, and there might be like a couple more tweaks after that, but, mm -hmm. but, but a big part of it too, is you have to be comfortable with the fact that nothing you do is ever going to be as perfect as you want it to be. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a tough thing to tell, especially somebody new in the thing. They're like, no, I'm not going to stop until it's perfect. And mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's something you learn over time that you just have, I mean, you have to be comfortable with it. I yeah. mean, look yeah. at, George Lucas was fucking with Star Wars <laughs> like until like five years ago or something, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know. But he could have he could have cut out some of the walking in the desert, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, we yeah. get it, the you walking in the desert. You didn't cut that out. You no. just added more ro more aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Not production value. Yeah. yeah. Um, Most of it. And so, I mean, ultimately, what was your goal? I mean, there's it seems like there's obvious goals for some films the, like the Marvel movies at this point, as much as I love them, their goal is to make is to make $2 billion. Their goal is to make more money than the last one. That's the same thing with star Wars. Now, as much as I love star Wars, that's their goal at this point. Um, what was your intention and what was your goal with making bootyology? Um, well, Joe, Joe, you want to field that since it was your, my goal was I love, making movies i mean my goal was to you know make a really you know because i'm always going to make the, the next movie and my goal is always to work with people that i care about and and do stories that I, like i think i told you in the last interview that this was one that was been simmering for a long time mm -hmm. we had a great opportunity so my goal just became I you lock in on it and I'm like this is for me personally this is what I want to do right now and for my next movie and I hope that they feel as passionate about it as I do and um, my goal is always you you make a movie that people respond to and it gives you a chance to make another movie. Awesome. Yeah. I think passion is the word there. You know, mm -hmm. unlike. Uh, Unlike when you talk about, you know, sort of the more corporate world, I don't think anybody is like super passionate about the multiverse of madness, right? It's not somebody's yeah. story that they just got to get out. Um, 
but you know for us for us this was very uh, every bit a passion project and it was a good way to you know making the new record was was a start when we had that idea and then doing the film was like sort of it sort of logically made sense as a way to kind of both celebrate and <laughs> kind of say goodbye at the same time to the booty boys like to send them out and let let the world see the story of of what these you know idiots did <laughs> and uh you know we're all we're all uh i think pretty funny people so uh you know just to bring especially you know it was conceived in a time of darkness and everybody you know uncertainty so to uh to really put our heads together and make something that we knew would just serve the purpose of making people happy and laugh um mm-hmm. You know, that was the driving force. And I, I think we suspected it would do well on the festival circuit, which it did. Um, so, you know, I, I think we we thought it was going to bring joy to people. And we're really happy to hear that it is doing that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and then so the more I look back at the film, uh, the more I feel like a, a lot of it hinged on balance, balance behind the scenes, balance in the film itself. Um, and that, I mean, you guys wore a lot of hats, like Bob said earlier. I mean, you guys did a lot of different things, whether it was producing, writing, acting, singing, all these different things. Um, how do you manage to achieve that balance? And then in the actual songs, especially songs like We Are All But Men, how do you manage to achieve a balance between absurdity and relevance? Uh, well, I, that that song was I think we mentioned this way. It was literally the 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 uh, marching orders were make a song that will win the Academy Award. <laughs> so like we thought of like all of like, what does it need? It needs like a, a really well sung thing. Um, it needs a message. It needs to be like we were thinking of like what what would like the common and uh, it was. It was common and john legend and john legend version <laughs> of a song for this movie be or like an elton john you know like whatever like that was kind of the driving force there and um, we are okay. what man is like is like the inception of of satirical songs okay. it, it is almost three levels of satire that that movie that that particular song needs to hit it still needs to hit rap satire needs to hit the oscar song satire it needs to still reflect what's happening in the film this is the inception of uh <laughs> it's basically yeah. the greatest song ever made go i think <laughs> <laughs> it's it was yeah that one was like you know i think we we were really we you know we knew like the emotional core of what we were trying to hit that helps sort of create craft the music um the message you know we talked about for a while because like you know any song about butts you you it, you know it helps to have sort of a, a theme i guess like because you know you can say all kinds of things about butts but then you know putting it into what about the butt yeah what exactly about Seriously. what are we doing here and and i think uh yeah and i think like we we really we we I think we came up with the hook and then we kind of crafted the the verses and and then we you know we and then and then also it's like the storytelling of of the song we had to like figure out okay who's going first who's going second because yeah that was a discussion there, there there's a moment in there that you Story kind moment. of capture and then and then and then you know sort of having a back and forth thing you know like we we it was all like it was all thought out. Um, you know we i think because of our background doing music for for you know for film and tv we already kind of like we already do that all the time is like tell a story in a in a in a pop song like Mm -hmm. how do we get from one place to another in this song um so um so i but but then but then yeah then when you're writing the lyrics you know it's like you you're trying to be you're trying to be as deep as possible while being as you know funny stupid. and stupid <laughs> and you know like get as many butt references in there you know it's a lot of it's a lot of it is a lot of work I think you yeah I don't know I just have like a bunch of notes now like I used to do it on paper but now I'm like in my phone I just have like all these crazy notes and I come up with you know I, I you're I don't know what your process is like but for me a lot of times I like 
will think of a concept and then try and figure out how to get like an inner rhyme or, you know, you just start like trying to write all this stuff. And there was a few things. My ideas come to me while I'm either pooping or in the shower <laughs> and I can't write them down. And so I just. Sometimes that's at the same time. I become like a <laughs> shower. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you got to be efficient, Joe. When you're a busy man like I am, <laughs> you don't have time to do sequentially. You have to parallel. Yeah, but. yeah. And Kyle, what you were saying on the balance, just to 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 speak to that as well, like the balance in in the whole film, it started off at, at least for me, like almost right away in the fact that like I had uh, over here, there's like a sausage and beer place. And so Joe was like, here it is. And he like shows me this like dossier and it's got like the pictures of the guys. And it's like, where the hell did the booty go? And I'm like, I love it. We have music all in the studio. And so we come back and we listen to music and we're like, this is going to be awesome. And I'm like, okay, we're going to call the guys. And then, and then, you know, Chris and Spencer are like, okay, a booty boys movie. What about this thing? So, so there was always like that balance, like, like Joe had so many like, cool ideas but then you know the guys were like okay well we were looking at like the record was like we were getting unfrozen and we're like mm. oh okay, well that could that could work in the movie the unfreezing thing and then and then that's where that all came so before we even got any cameras out or any i mean there were i mean what would you guys say like like weeks that we were all months, on months. Yeah, months yeah months that we were all on zooms um just just crafting this this narrative that you see because mm -hmm. there is so much history i mean you know i mean the guys probably told you last time but but you know we really played the viper room like that's real like we really opened for sir mix a lot like all of that is really real stuff that the booty boys did mm -hmm. and you're like, well that's that's good fodder but what are <laughs> what are we showing like yeah. and who are these people that were helping uh to tell this story and i think collaboratively coming up with the character of Kayla being um, a record executive, younger, you know, uh, uh, African-American, like someone that, that that's like, hey, look, sorry, but uh, what am I doing here? I could be with, you know, I could be working with Meg the Stallion right now and I'm working with you guys. Like, are we going to do this or what? And so, so like, like having, having those kind of things that were built in the movie, and the storytelling process, I think, was was really cool. And it showed the balance. I mean, I, I really saw it between between Joe and then and then the guys, I thought was was a major thing that really, really helped, you know, propel the movie to where you know, it worked. It worked. I mean, going back to the song, I remember that. And this should be mentioned because that, that was a big thing. Like my original idea for, for the, the musical number was a more up tempo song. I don't know if you guys remember that. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's got to come out banging. Right, because remember, I, I think I told you, Kyle, Lab, one of my touchstones for it was the Blues Brothers. I was like, oh, no, it's mm -hmm. going to like shake your tail feather and everyone's going to be, you know, going crazy or whatever. And it was the guys that said, what about something anthemic? And having lived with the idea of this other number in my head for so long, and through what I do in my process, that took a second. You got to, yeah. there's a sting of going, oh, they don't want to do the big banger number. And then you really think about it and you go, oh no, this is much better. This is what we should do. And then you go from there. Awesome. I think it worked out. Yeah. Very, very cool. And I mean, we're sitting here talking about balance and the writing process again for a movie called Bootyology. And I don't think that people- Yeah, I think this sometimes it sounded too serious. <laughs> we need to make more jokes. Or someone I, needs I, to I, fart or something. <laughs> no, I've been farting the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I don't think that people anticipate going into a movie with this name, um, with this plot line, and seeing a well-made movie. So I, I think it's important to shine some light some on that. Some of them may still think that. <laughs> <laughs> There's at least one guy that thinks that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then so for each one of you guys, what, what was your favorite part about making this movie? I'm my favorite part was just hanging out with my friends every day. To tell you the truth, I wasn't. I was the least worried about the movie because I lived with it the longest. So, in my head, yeah, I didn't. I didn't just you know come to Bob and be like, let's do it. Like I, I had a sort of a blueprint in my head for a long, long time. So mm -hmm. I would come every day and 
it's it's the most relaxed I've been on any movie that I've worked on. That's really cool. I was feeling great. Uh, for me, the first I was it the first it might have been the second day of shooting. Uh, we ended up on stage for a scene that happens toward the end of the film uh, with the entire group of people. We had Queen Booty Tifa, we had the Booty Tron, we had the professor reading his book. Yeah, that was great. And it was this just insane, like retro, just sort of love feeling that like we hadn't done, we literally hadn't done that in 15 years. And then, and everything with making a film is so like kind of frenetic. We're like shooting, blah, 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 getting everyone ready. We got lunch, we have COVID tests, we got you know, <laughs> SAG paperwork and all of this stuff. And then, you know, someone runs over with a costume and they're like, okay, now we're doing the stage scene. And you're like, okay, put on the thing. And then like, you get up there and you look around and you're like, oh my God, like this is happening right now. <laughs> and that, that moment was just so amazing to me and so weird. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was beautiful. I, cool. I second that. I think that was one of the highlights. I mean, I mean, just seeing all those people, right? Like we were coming out of, you know, a lockdown and just like being able to see all of our old friends and so many people that were willing to like be a part of this. Like, you know, it was really, it was crazy to, you know, have like people like Andy Kindler, who like, I think still is not really going out ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he showed up um, and, and, you know, just a lot of, and and then all of the people that we used to, you know, perform with like that, that came back out and, and rep reprised their characters um i guess sort of reprise i mean they ne we never really did anything like this but like the people that 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 you know we got all the real people that was pretty awesome and and then for the, i think the one other point was like when we I, w I went to go pick up some some stuff from the printer and i saw the like the booty boys hat and when i first it was like a recreation of the hats that we had back then and like i hadn't seen one of those and it was like brand new and it had the logo and i was like i was like oh man this is crazy this is like I don't know. That was a pretty awesome moment. Yeah. 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 I think, awesome. I, th I think, I think we are all, but men shooting that segment was, was, yeah, that was, that was really special to me. Cause there's just so many like personal, like, like what the guys are talking about. Like, like you have the, 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 you know, the old crew, like, like Megan, Queen, Booty Tifa and those people. But then, also in in we are all but men you have like like you know in the background you have like joe's sister and spencer's wife and 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 little girl and and like you know when spencer and i are are walking up and he's doing his verse like we give a pound to uh to dj backdoor to our friend sham like like all those things that like it's that was that scene was very full circle to me and mm -hmm. and uh and and it was it was just dope too. Like we, you know, it was the the first day we had like cranes and stuff and all that stuff going on. And it was that felt was like a, a that felt like we were making an Avengers movie. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a crane, there's a back lot, there's yeah. like yeah, yeah. We shot on this like cool back lot. So so yeah, the crew and, and was like, like double the size. Yeah, yeah, that was no. yeah. So it was it was just really cool. And and all the people that were there to um uh to support and and all that stuff and and seeing all those people like arm in arm like like you know i mean like all the guys are saying this you know this was a very personal thing to all of us and you see every single one of those faces means something to me you know mm -hmm. when they were there that day um a couple people not good things it's, it's but you know, yeah, yeah. there's a couple people who we won't talk about <laughs> 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 but, but in general um so, but watching Spencer or uh, sorry, watching uh, Joe's sister and dad lip syncing "We Are All But Men" is worth the price of admission. <laughs> yeah, sure. that's amazing. So you guys all had different answers, but they're all very similar in the sense that you know, you guys all mentioned earlier, this is very much a passion project, and I think on a meta, like a meta level, that makes movies better. I mean. Again, I love the Marvel movies and the Star Wars movies, but they just want my money. They don't care if I'm happy. They just care if they get my whatever, how I don't know, eighteen dollars, wherever it costs to go to a movie. Now, the fact that you guys genuinely give a shit about this makes it better. So, yeah, we um, that, that would be the case, and I'm glad it did. <laughs> um, and then so 
where remind everybody where they can find this movie, where they can find the album, and where they can find all four of you guys. Um, well, you can find us as District Seventy Eight at at District Seventy Eight on all the major platforms. Um, Booty Boys stuff is at Booty Boys Music. Website is bootyologymovie.com. Um, soundtracks on every single same streaming. Yeah, yeah, whatever wherever you listen to music, it's there. It's the yeah, Bootyology original uh original motion picture, picture soundtrack. soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. And then um there was one other thing I wanted to say. Oh, the movie is on you can anywhere you can rent movies. It's pretty yeah, much I think it's on all the VOD platform. platforms like uh Amazon. The Apple. only the only on demand yeah. platform I'm still almost positive that it's not on is direct TV. It's on every cable platform, it's on every yeah. You know, do people have direct TV? Is that a thing anymore? I don't know. <laughs> now that they don't have Sunday ticket, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're we're, uh, we're working really hard to make sure that it's the algorithm is cooperating so people can just see that, sort of see our thumbnail. And uh, we hope that, that that image um is getting stuck in people's head. Yeah, we we need all we still need, you know, a good word of mouth and and uh, just the reward to get out there to hit our, our sweet spot. Well, well, I, we, hope this, I, I hope this helps to, a little bit. We yeah. need you to tell <laughs> one person for every DVD you own. <laughs> <laughs> to watch this movie. Well, you'll be you'll be set if that's the case. And then I have I have to ask because of you know how many DVDs I have. Is this going to be on DVD so that I can buy it and and stick it on the wall behind me. You know, our carriage letter said it was, but we're not sure if it was a mistake. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna figure that out. Yeah. I will I will make you this promise, Kyle. If it's not, we will burn you a DVD, <laughs> you a jacket, yeah, we'll mail it to your house. Fantastic! I look forward to it. And every one of a kind. Yeah, yeah. We'll sign yeah. it. But again, I hope I hope that this helps. I mean, not that as charming as I am, not that many people watch this podcast. Um, so I'm hoping that you know the few people that do watch, check the movie out, or the soundtrack, or even just you guys. So um, well, we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah of course. We're appreciative. And then, so I end. I typically end every episode with "What's your favorite movie?" But I did that last time, Bob. I didn't get yours. But then for the rest of you. Uh, what's the best thing you've seen recently? All right. Well, let's let Bob answer the movie question first. Uh, that's super hard. <laughs> um, and I feel on the spot because no one else is, I, I don't know anyone else's answer. Joe, what was your answer? I pick, I go with like, with that question, I'm like, what, what would I watch on Desert Island over and over? So I picked Blade Runner. You picked Blade Runner? I said Pulp Fiction. You said Pulp Fiction. I thought, uh, you, I thought we determined that yours was Pretty Woman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty woman. That was me. I mean, you know, um, that Richard Gear. Uh, okay, and then I will say, what did you say? Mine was Groundhog Day. Oh yeah, and he yeah, just you kept saying it over and over, over and over and over. Yeah, over yeah. Over. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go with my classic, which is Singing in the Rain. Wow. Interesting. Sing, Interesting. Singing in the Rain. I, I, if it's if it's ever on or whatever, like like, and sometimes like in hipster bars and, and restaurants in LA they'll have like old films on and stuff and if singing in the rain's on even without the sound on I will I will I will watch it like it's just yeah amazing for me that movie is love actually like every Christmas when it's on I just end up watching it which yeah. is weird I don't know but that's a, probably the movie I've seen the most just because it's always on love actually I like I like to watch Spencer watch love actually yeah <laughs> and then when when the tears uh, you know that's yeah. how you for the, your cranks that's it is that's what i was thinking about i was just thinking yeah. about that guy marching up into that small <laughs> town as far as that's recent fun. uh last night um we watched my wife and i watched no hard feelings which i laughed very hard throughout very funny funnier than i expected honestly yeah me too so i'll give that a recommendation awesome man what did i see recently that i love I, don't know, you guys I really know. enjoyed the Barbie movie. I have a daughter who's seven, and we play a lot of Barbie, so that landed that landed hey. with me a lot. It, uh, I, you know, it, it has its problems, but I thought <laughs> it was very funny, and uh, so I enjoyed that. But I also saw Nobody, 
recently with uh, Bob Odenkirk. It's a great movie too. Yeah. Uh, I saw Blue Beetle recently just because like there was nothing else playing. And so we were like, well, let's watch this. I watched it with a friend of mine. And we were both really weirdly impressed by it. Uh, I, was, I mean, I knew nothing about it. I don't know about the character. I don't know mm-hmm. anything about the history of it. I just, I just thought it was like a really strong sort of family forward, really simple superhero take. Yeah. That, uh, that I thought was really uh, unique. It made me happy. Awesome. Very, very cool. Um, well, yeah, Bob, what, what did you see recently that, uh, uh, that you loved? Recently, um, it was a couple, but uh, I think I think I really liked what? The Bob Mitzvah one. The Bob Mitzvah one was good. I I think uh, I got a chance on a plane to see Chevalier, and that was okay. very good. Have you seen that? I have not seen that one. No. Um, I don't. I I know it's not like, like super recent, but um, but I thought that was that was very very well done. And then of course I I you know I wouldn't be me without loving theater camp. <laughs> I was so happy I got to I got to see it in the theater. Everyone was Barbenheimer, and I was in uh in a, my wife and I were in a theater uh watching theater camp with you know like four theater dorks in the front, and I <laughs> I, I couldn't have been happier. It was awesome. Yeah, Oppenheimer, the theater was full. Barbie, the theater was full. I saw theater camp and there were four of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but guys, again, you, you guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. I don't, like I said, I don't often get to have people on twice to talk about the same movie twice and really get to go in this, this in depth about it. So thank you so much, guys, for taking some time. I'm sure you guys are busy and I genuinely appreciate oh, it. it thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, we'll see of you next course. week. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank guys. You, Kyle. Thank Thanks, you, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Okay.